what do you, what do each of you suggest? What would be your number one piece of advice coming into a hill country situation? Um, more than likely, it would be going in blind. I know there's a thousand answers, but in kind of an open-ended question, but what would be your number one piece of advice you could give to a hunter uh, first going into hill, hill country? Who's first? Jake, go you go first. Uh, yeah, I can go. So number, so are you talking about going into it as far as like scouting and then hunting or going or like diving right in, in a hunting situation? I guess scouting during the day and then setting up for an evening hunt. Okay. Um, my number one piece of advice for that, I would say that I wouldn't, I wouldn't set up a stand in a location until I was very confident in that location. So I would rather take the scouting out in the woods or, you know, traveling around trying to locate a deer in the woods or locate sign over the hunt, you know, and once I have what I feel I need to locate, which you're a hunter, you're going to know that stuff, right? You know, once I have that, that dialed in and I'm confident in the area where it's like, okay, there's good sign here. You know, I have this here, it's thick up on top of that ridge, it's leeward, it's facing either, you know, for your whatever your wind is, if it's a south wind, it's facing north or some version of that. Um, you know, it's got some of these factors that I'm looking for. If you can couple that with thick areas like clear cuts, or if you can couple that with a very obvious destination food source like a private hag field, that's going to help up your odds in a short period. Thank you. Yep. So for me, um, being fairly familiar with uh, Western Wisconsin and the area you're talking about, um, and knowing the pressure well and the size of the properties, they're smaller properties. Um, my suggestion would be to look at some maps beforehand, find properties that are uh, away from the cities and in, in bigger towns, more in the farming areas, because the, the properties, there's lots of public over there but there's scattered small properties. And when you get into the farming communities and away from the campgrounds and, and towns and stuff, the people that travel there to hunt generally hunt near where they stay. And they don't go out into the middle of these farming areas and the people in the farming areas have farms to hunt on. So they don't get as much pressure. And then I look for properties that have hard access or the access isn't very obvious. Like there's no parking spot or, you know, um, when they got big parking lots, they get pounded. And then, then um, I look for the overlook stuff, the stuff overlooking the parking lots when it's got a low access, um, the stuff that's across a creek, uh, the harder access stuff. I'll map that stuff out beforehand before I even go because uh, you have all summer to do that, right? So map out some spots and, you know, mark them on Onyx where you want to check out. And then when you get there and hunt, the biggest mistake people make is they'll map out those spots and they'll go to them in the dark or at first light and they'll sit there the whole day and they'll say, in rut, I got to be in a tree the whole day. My odds of getting, killing a deer during rut is all day. And uh, I don't really agree with that. Um, if you have the place pre-scouted and you know where to be, yeah, being in a tree all day is probably better than sitting in a restaurant. But scouting those spots that you have marked one after another sliding in there in a way that you won't spook the deer but checking them out and then hunting the hottest spot you found for the day for the evening you know what i mean and just repeating putting in a lot of scouting and finding those good spots and uh making sure you're in a good spot every day it's more important you have to have some scouting time during the day it's my point so i i'm not real familiar with western <clears throat> wisconsin uh, but I guess I'd give you the tips for when I think of hill country, I think of bigger chunks of public, which I bet Jake probably does too. Um, I would advise you to probably try to walk one mile before you really get serious about um, where you're, you're going to start scouting um, around here. If you can get a mile in, it seems like the, the pressure drastically um, reduces. Uh, you'll find, ladder stands and ground blinds and everything else up to about a mile and then things go away. And then also I found some really good spots around here that are like, we have some like gravel roads that run through the, the public and people don't seem to hunt off the ridges on those gravel roads. 
So that would be what Dan said, overlook spot. But um, that's what I always tell people is you can walk, you can walk away from people in the hills. Um, I don't know if that's a good one or not, but you guys had good ones. So I wanted something different. <laughs> yeah, I think they were all good points. I just, like I said, there, there are a thousand different answers for the question that I asked, but I wanted to hear from each of you just to get an idea of how each of you would attack it differently. Hey, everybody. If you like the channel, make sure you subscribe right here. And if you like the clips, I got two more options for you. Two options right here. Subscribe right here. See you guys.